In this episode, we'll step through the deployment of a containerized or a dockerized application on AWS using EC2 and RDS. There are a few different ways one can do this, but we are going to try out one of the easiest approaches which works well for small sized applications. I am going to be using the Rails application that we wrote in episode 5, which is a Rails API only application that uses MySQL database. And we are going to be deploying that application on AWS EC2 instance, a smallest possible instance for this video. And I'll be using Docker machine to provision the EC2 instance with the Docker install on it, similar to the one we did in episode 5 to provision a droplet on DigitalOcean. Also, we will use AWS IAM to configure a user with API access permissions, which we will need to be able to access or provision EC2 instance using Docker machine. And for the MySQL database, I'll be using RDS. I'll create a new instance of RDS with MySQL for our application. Let's get started. In the terminal window, go to the projects folder and create a directory. I'll name the directory as deploy AWS. Open this directory in a code editor. Here we'll need to create two compose files, one for testing locally and one for deploying on AWS. And the environment that we're going to deploy on AWS, I'd like to name it as staging. Now let's create the compose file for the local testing and I'll name it as local.yaml. And to make it quicker, let's copy the compose file from the application code on GitHub. And this is the application code that I used in episode 5, which is basically a Rails API only application that has a couple of REST APIs. Now copy the Docker Compose staging example and paste that in here. Let's take a quick look at the Compose file. It has two services defined, one for the database MySQL and the second one is for the application. And for the local testing, I'll not be using RDS, so I'll still need the database service. Make no changes in here, but we need to make some changes to the app service. Notice the app on local also runs as production environment, which is okay and that's probably how I'd like to test it on local. Let's change the host port as uh, 3007 to avoid port conflicts on local. And we also need the application image now. And one option is to download the source code and build an image out of that. That should be fairly straightforward. But I have that application image, the latest one published on Docker Hub. So here it is and it has a similar compose file example and some instructions for users to follow through. Let's copy that image path and paste that in here. And that is depth head slash rails API example. Save the compose file and go to the terminal and let's run it. Docker compose up using the compose file local.yaml. Application is running. Let's go to the REST client and make a GET request to the POSTS API, which is HTTP localhost 3007 slash POSTS. And it failed. That is because of the pending migration. Let's run the migration. Docker compose run with the local.yaml. Rails DB migrate. And you can have remove options or also run the Rails DB migrate using bundle exec. Once that is complete, let's also run dbc to populate some data. And docker compose run using the local yaml rails dbc. Let's run the application again and go back to the rest client, reload the post API and it works. So the application looks good on local. So let's move on to staging. Let's make a copy of the compose file for the staging environment to be deployed on AWS. Name it as staging.yaml. And for staging on AWS, we'll be hosting the database on RDS. So let's get rid of the DB service from the compose file. And for the app service, image remains the same. And let's make the host port as 80. And there is no DB service dependence in here. We can remove those. But now we need the database configurations, which is going to be the MySQL on RDS. Now let's get that created. Go to aws.amazon.com. If you don't have any AWS account, you may want to sign up one and try this out. I have an account already and I'm logged in. Go to AWS Management Console. And in here, under the services, a bunch of AWS services listed in there. Let's scroll down to the database section and pick RDS. Go to the instances from the left hand navigation, launch database instance. Let's pick MySQL and select. You may select the production version for the MySQL instance, but I'll stick to the dev test, which works for our non-production and is available on free tier as well. Next step. And in here, we need to provide some database details and configurations. Leave some of these configurations default and you may want to change the MySQL version if needed. Depending on the need uh, in terms of uh, capacity, you may want to pick the, the right size of the instance class. But for this episode, I'm going to use the smallest possible instance class. And also, I'm okay with the single zone for this application. But for production, you may want to go with multiple availability zone option. Let the storage type be the default and 5 gigs of allocated storage is good enough and more configurations here give the instance an identifier let the username be blog user and some password and next step under the network and security settings we are good with the defaults ensure the public accessible is set to yes and let the database name be blog and let the other fields set to default now let's go ahead and launch the instance 
the database instance is being created which will take a few minutes while we are waiting for the rds instance created let's go update the staging compose file for the database configurations database user is blog user as we configure database name is blog database password for blog user is password 123 which is what i entered and for the database host name we need to wait for the rds instance be ready let's go reload the rds instances page and we have the instance created now go to the instance detail view and here we have the database configs and the endpoint which basically will be the database host name for our rails application and copy that for the db host in the docker compose file everything else looks good and that's it now that we have the aws rds for mysql ready and the compose file we need the aws ec2 instance we're going to spin up an EC2 instance using Docker machine for which we will need AWS access key ID and the secret key. Go to AWS management console, go to IAM, the identity and access management, under which go to the users using the left navigation. I already have one user, but let's create a new user. Add user, fill in the username field, and the access type should include the programmatic access so that the user has access to the AWS APIs, which is what the Docker machine will need. And also let it have access to the management console as well. Let's set some permissions to this user. Now, one should be careful about assigning permissions to any of the users in your team. I'll just give admin access to this new user. Go ahead and review and submit. We have a new user created. Let's copy the access key ID and secret key for this user. Let's take a look at the EC2 instances we already have in this account. And I have one in here. Now, let's go to the terminal window on my local. Instead of supplying AWS API access key and secret in the Docker machine command, let's configure using the AWS CLI which is AWS configure, paste in the access key ID and uh, secret key, which we copied. Now check your default zone in the AWS management console. Uh, in here it is US West 2 and the output format can be done. Once configured, it puts the AWS access credentials or configurations under .AWS directory under the user home directory. Now let's create an EC2 instance. The command is docker machine create driver Amazon EC2 and Amazon EC2 region is US West 2 and a name for the EC2 instance or the docker machine, which is node 1. There are a bunch of options available for the docker machine create command for the EC2 driver, and those will be useful if you want to customize the EC2 instance. We will not be going into the details of those in this episode. Let's go ahead and run this command. This will take a few minutes, which creates a new EC2 instance, names it as node 1, and provisions operating system Ubuntu, and installs and runs docker. And here we have this complete now. Let's do a docker machine ls which will list the docker machines. We have node 1 in here and reload the ec2 instances page on aws management console and we have node 1 in here as well. Back to the terminal window. Let's have the docker client on my local point to the docker host on node 1 or on the ec2 instance we just created. Verify that docker host environment variable is now pointing to ec2 instance and that looks good. Now let's go ahead and deploy the application. But before we run the application we need to run the migration. Let's do that docker compose run app rails db migrate using the staging yaml now this will run against the database mysql on rds instance that we configured well the rails db migrate fail as it could not connect to the rds instance database the issue is the security settings of the rds instance that we created let's take a look at that go to the rds instance detail view click on the security group assigned to this instance in here, check the inbound settings. Now this defines the possible inbound ports that any of the instances with the security group can allow. Now here it does allow 3306 port, but from a source with specific IP range. To make it easier, let's just open this out to the world so that the database on RDS instance can be accessed from anywhere. Let's go edit. Instead of editing the existing rule, let's just create a new one. Type here is MySQL and TCP port is 3306 and the source is anywhere. That looks good. Back to the terminal window, let's run the migration again and it went through. Let's also run dbseed to populate some test data for us and that's good. Now let's start up the app service on EC2. The Docker Compose using the staging YAML compose file up and in a detached mode using minus D option. Ensure that Docker host is pointing to the EC2 instance and run. Let's check the service status and it looks good. Let's get the public domain name of node one, the EC2 instance. Here we have that and it's pretty long, but that's okay. Copy that. Now go to the REST client. Because we had the host port in the staging YAML map to 80, we should be able to access the API on port 80 using the public domain name or the public IP address. Make a GET request on POSTS API on that address and it responded with some blog post entries and it looks good. 
let's test the post show api or the detail api of one of the posts in the entries and that looks good too that's it we just deployed the rails api application on ec2 with mysql database on our rds instance that's it for this episode thanks for watching